Hello and welcome back to MMO Play. Today we're taking a look at Marvel Heroes Online, a new action RPG brought to you by Gazillion. It is actually a Marvel Universe game with an action RPG vent to it. And the question becomes, well, is it any good? It is a free-to-play game. There is five characters you can choose from and you can play for free completely like that and you're not missing anything out on it. Next thing I do want to look at is the crafting system. Some of these are a bit. I actually untested. kind of a fan of this because it uses garbage you're not using anymore. So well, you can use go to character or a vendor or a crafter or anything like that. You can see the donate button. Alt right click. It'll level him up. He's currently ranked two. So I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. That you can see it's gaining experience. Here we go. I don't want. Well, actually, I might want that if I can upgrade it later. That I can just. Get rid of all of the stuff I don't I want. Oh, that was another character. And you can see I've gained a little bit of experience. When I get to level 3, he'll have new gear. When I hit level 2, I was able to upgrade items up to level 12. To, from a rare item to an epic. I upgraded this bodysuit right here. And it's now a purple item. So the crafting system is actually basic, but I like it. I'm a fan of simple, but items don't go to waste. You can just vendor them all if you want money. Also, crafting does require do money. Let's see here. Nice this one lab. It's gonna take 300 credits, so I can afford to upgrade. Hey, maybe I actually want to upgrade this. I'm gonna need one of those. I'm gonna need a simple enhancement, and I can create this. Take a little bit of time. You can see the 49 percent, 50 percent. But it's not gonna be hours and hours and like that. Nice and fast paced. And what do we get? So it got a lot more spirit, got dodge, upgraded a couple of my skills, and I can go ahead and bind that. It does bind on pickup or bind on equip. And well, since I can't sell it anymore, how about I? Ooh, a lot of XP for that one. Kind of reminds me of a cross between Diablo 2 and 3. The gem system, the upgrading, reminds me a little bit of upgrading gems, whereas the crafting system reminds me a little bit of upgrading your vendors in Diablo 3. Instead of offering them gold, you just uh, throw items at them, which could have been sold for gold. Next thing is the options menu. Hit escape, bring this up. Do you have a little bit of problem with this? It ties all the graphic settings together in one slider bar. I would actually have preferred to see these in as individual settings I can set by myself. Maybe my graphics card, my setup has certain settings that just work, that hurt me more than others. Maybe dynamic shadows hurts me a lot, but I'm okay with lots of good backgrounds. Another thing is the key bindings. Everything fully is bindable. Some of the keys I'm not a fan of. I do need to do this. Body slider, actually, if it makes any more sense, it's more of a town portal. It'll send you back to town. Gameplay, not too many gameplay options. Audio does have audio sliders. Overall, not quite enough options, but it's an action RPG. This is not a first person shooter. We don't need fancy schmancy sliders all over the place. Speaking of action RPG, Next step I'm going to look into is, this is a Marvel Heroes style game, but an action RPG, a hack and slash, more like a Diablo. You're going to have isometric view, you're going to click to move, lots of clicking. You're going to have the left click, right click for abilities, and then also ASD, FGH for you your uh, secondary bound abilities. You're going to have your leveling cap. It reminds me more of a fantasy game, honestly. I'm just noticing uh, Lieutenant Thunderpants over there. I don't think that the theme of Marvel quite fits action RPG. You can't jump, you can't fly, some heroes have certain mobility abilities, but it's quite limiting. There are certain things you just cannot do in an action RPG that you could do anywhere else. And without those, I think it kind of hurts the game a little bit. I think they're, they should have stuck to theme more than genre. And I honestly think in this case, if they would have gone for something closer to DCUO, where it's a third person RPG instead of an isometric action RPG, whatever better. That and you don't have to have. Action RPG, hack and slash, does not have to be isometric. Speaking of comparing it to Diablo, it is very similar to Diablo. Probably a hybrid between two and three. You do not have stats that you can necessarily increase. These do go up over time. It shows you when. Let's see, that's going to go up at level 13. That's going to go up at 42. So it shows their basic stats. The more detailed stats here, you do not get to increase them. 
It basically factors your hero plus your equipment on you. You got your bio. I'll get into that in just a touch. And then the thing that makes it a little different from Diablo 3 is it does have a skill tree. So it's kind of a hybrid in between 2 and 3. A lot of people like the customization of stats from 2. I remember one of the things Blizzard devs were saying was, well, everyone just maxed out the same stats anyway, so there was no point. Yeah, but I like the ability... I think a lot of players like the ability of being able to customize. Even if it actually isn't customization, if everyone makes the same decision, it gives you the feeling of customization. Then the feeling of experimentation. You can try different styles of play. I can make my Scarlet Witch here a little higher on durability. So I take a little less damage. But at the same time, my energy won't be quite as high. That kind of stuff. I could have picked and chosen how I wanted to play just a little bit differently. Next thing on, is questing. This is kind of a hybrid between an action RPG and an MMO. You can see right there, just grab the quest. And I can go over here. Talk to <sighs> her. To I can travel to Hell's fire. Kitchen like that. Get Gordon Ramsay to come yell at me. No, not quite. Or I can go to the waypoint. This is basically going to be a direct similarity between other this game and other action RPGs. Everyone's going to be thinking Diablo, obviously. But I can see all the places I've unlocked before. We can go ahead, maybe I can go to... Blood Rose Entrance. This is a club, a nightclub district. Next you can see there is a loading screen. There was a point where I had a loading screen that was about a minute long, but I, it did it right after it showed me a comic clip. I kind of wish that they would show comic clips while you're loading. It would make these screens seem a lot more interesting, a lot less annoying. Then it seems like my computer's a little dated, but it's still probably above average. The loading times are pretty darn high. Now for the world itself, you can see we're exploring around here. Another thing, the minimap up here. Every time you log off and log back on, the minimap changes. Even in shared instances, shared areas. I do not like that. Once I explore an area, I wish it stayed on my map. It is nice to see what I haven't seen today. But at the same time, it doesn't really help me in any way, shape, or form. The graphic style, for an action RPG, it's going to be less important. Let's see. That carpet looks okay. Some of it, it does look a little dated, but at the same time, it is going to be not quite as important as maybe a shooter or even a third-person RPG. Okay, finally getting some combat. You're going to hear a lot of clicking. I do have mechanical keyboard and programmable mouse and my pretty sensitive mic, so... This is part of an action RPG experience. There's gonna be a lot of clicking. Let's get into the combat itself. Currently, I have a left click ability. You can hit shift to do that. You can see the animations are pretty basic on that. Although there's a little bit of writing between them. Oh, sorry, I just blew up someone's car. You do have a mana pool, it regens pretty fast. Let's see. Right click, right click, right click, right click. Uh, there. And there we go. Once you're out of combat and stop spamming, it regens pretty quickly. You can hit, you can hold on Alt to see items. You have to hold it, you can't just click it once. There was no setting to change how you want to see loot. Uh, it's a setting I wish that would be in the game. I'm a fan of the idea of it shows up temporarily and then you have to hit Tab Alt and it'll keep it for like 10 seconds. That's the setting I always use in Diablo 3. It's the kind of setting I like. And it's one of the things, I, I think it needs more settings. You can pick up barrels, you can toss them. Sound assets on that are a little bit low. Is there an item in here? No. You can see the, the items you can interact with by hitting Alt 2, so you can interact with all that. Okay, that's the AOE done. And I leveled up. With experience comes power. And responsibility. Nice gun leveled up too. Locked in that little stone fragment. And you can see here we do have a bit of a story going on too. So there is a story to the game. You were a fool to challenge me. And I'm guessing we're gonna see a boss battle right here, Dr. Rock. Huh. So, he's gonna be a bit of a bullet sponge, but not as bad as some characters. 
I mean, there are bosses and things in Warcraft that can take 10 minutes to kill. Although I've not played the 40 Crusades, so I'm saying that from past experience, not currently. Sort of like the You can't just pull on your click button, too. Nice and easy. Don't want to give yourself a ARPG arthritis. Very difficult on arthritic RPG before. But for the most part, at least at this level, it's nothing taken to think. There is PvP currently in the game. It is being listed as in a beta state and is currently under testing. I'm not sure if I get too much in the PvP. I probably will still it briefly just for a short combat. But it is not meant. I want the loot! But here we go, here's some of the story. Some of the voice actors will probably sound kind of familiar. Thank you. I was looking for that. I've already heard General Anderson from Mass Effect. Fuck. I can get a medal. This is very interesting. You kill a character, you get their medal. Let's see, I get area powers. Ooh, I actually kinda like that. So I'm gonna equip that. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna equip that. What man builds, nature destroys. Items. Loot does seem to be character specific, but if you pick up an item and it drops, your inventory is full, everyone else can grab it, so there is that. Go over here for my quest. Objective complete, and think about Canaveral Tower. Turn my Probably got a quest here to turn in and get some reward. Again, the loading times are a little bit long. I do wish there were cutscenes during the loading times. And there we go, mission reward plus one power points. I also got 25 hit points permanently from during that quest too. But this is an open world area, or in the storage yard. And this is where it's got a bit of an MMO feel to it, which is a, a, a nice combination. You got some action RPG. A lot of times action RPGs feel like single player games even when they're implemented online. Diablo 3, it feels like a lot of times you spend most of your time either with real life friends or, uh, well, you know, like guildmates. Or you spend it with pretty much yourself. You go solo game. This it does give you a little more interaction with other players. It does make it feel a little more MMO feeling. What do we got here? A vendor. Yeah, he's selling, selling some kits. That's good. There are real world or there are events here that just are repeating events. Ooh. And here's a clip from one of those events. I will say it's a little underwhelming. You can see you just sit there and wait at the truck for these guys to walk out and get instantly killed. There are boss events a little more interesting, but for the most part, they're predictable and kind of easy. Alright, time to get into the pricing of the game, some of the things that you can buy. The packages for gold, I believe? G, whatever it is. But, some things you can get. 500 gold will get you 5 bucks. So, in general, expect to pay about a dollar for every 100 gold. So, let's go look at some of the things you can get. Black Panther, 900. Black Widow, 600. So, these are like $9, $6. Let's see, how about... What if you want to play Spider-Man? $20 effectively. Different costumes. 13 These are completely optional. They're not adding anything to it, but... That is quite expensive. If you're a fan of fluff and you want to support the developers, it's not too cheap to do it, honestly. What's this? Also, you can get the pack here for 100 coins. You can get... Just all kinds of different random items. Might be a good way to accumulate some stuff cheaply. You can unlock characters in-game by playing the game. They are part of the story. Sometimes they'll be random drops. I believe they are purple drops, so expect them to not be too common. So there's just a brief look at that. But for the free-to-play portion of it, I haven't felt that my free-to-play character is weak in any way. I have not had a chance to participate in PvP, so I'm not going to say whether or not the... Spider-Man is a more powerful character. He might be. He probably, I hope, isn't. And if that's the case, then it isn't pay to win. It's more pay to fluff. And in this case, the fluff is characters you know and, and recognize. So that's just a brief look at that. Not cheap, but completely optional. And here we go in the interest of science. And looking at it, I have access to a handful of new characters here so I can just go and click on here it is the roster T to bring this up and you can go and just switch character hey Iron Man so it brings up a little bar right here and then from there what's the plan 
Boom! We do have a plan. So nice. there we go, I got Iron Man now. I don't have to log out or anything like that. That's actually a really nice little niche to it. And then I can go back to Scarlet Witch. On here you can see it shows the level for the different characters, characters you have access to, characters you don't have access to. Also, if you have any alternate costumes, you'd probably be able to switch that too. So I can go pick the Scarlet Witch, go back to her. Iron Man's heading back up, he's calling the witch in. He takes off, Trust and she drops down. Me, so can I run on the fly? Take off, and you land right there. Nice. So that means I can also take my lower level character and get right into a higher level area. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's see. Oh, oh. By the way, collision detection. My armor's trash. Another thing you can do is they each have all the gold. They have unique stashes in the box. So those items I drop, maybe I got something I really want for my other character. Maybe a really cool Iron Man item drop. Just switch to him, pick it up. There we go. Nice and convenient. Really handy for that. Uh, I am a fan of that system. So, and I do want to show this real quick. It does have the ability to go back and replay old content. I can click this, go back to Chapter 1, and then in Chapter 1 I can go and replay that section with Dr. Ock if I wanted to. That is nice. It does give you a little bit more replayability and the ability to play with your friends. One of the weaknesses in a recent game that came out called Van Helsing was an action RPG, but it had pretty much very little replay value because you couldn't play old content. Also, for in-game content, we have daily missions. I can go do these daily missions. I got waypoints for daily raids. And then more missions here. Got gonna require some keys, so probably have to do some key questing. Also, for PvP, you must complete the story first, so and now for my overall impressions of the game as a whole. I'm going to look at it from each individual aspect. Probably start with affordability. In the case of a free-to-play game, generally you want to ask, is it truly free-to-play? Do you feel like you're missing anything by playing as a free character? In this case, no, I actually don't. I feel like I'm plenty competent with my free character. I don't feel like I was completely required to buy anything. I did eventually unlock some other characters just to test them out, and I probably will be playing with them over the next coming the coming days and weeks. But the Scarlet Witch felt like she was doing everything I wanted from her. I didn't feel like I was struggling in content. I didn't feel like I was holding my group down in the dungeon, except for when I was chatting instead of helping. So I felt fine. The pricing is expensive, but Path of Exile pricing is also expensive. If it's completely optional content, I don't care if it's expensive. The graphics. The graphics are a little lower, but they're acceptable. For an action RPG, I think we can accept a little lower. Heck, one of my favorite games of last year was Path of Exile. Path of Exile. It looks like a game for, similar to Diablo 2, but a little updated. So I'm not a huge stickler for graphics. And in this genre, I think you can get away with a little more. Speaking of genre, I think picking action RPG for this game does hurt. I really think that's one of the major, like the, the biggest weaknesses of the game. The fact that we do not have three-dimensional movements, the isometric view, all of that does not quite fit with the Marvel Universe. It does hurt. I do like some of the concepts in the game. I like how much destructible, interactable terrain there is into the game. I do like the fact that they mixed in action RPG along with MMO feel and with the open zones. But overall, I think that was the wrong kind of style for the game. And I do think it hurts it a little bit. Not being able to jump, not being able to fly, wall jump, spiderweb around. The mobility abilities of certain characters, they exist, but it doesn't feel quite right as it is. It does hurt things a little bit. The being able to switch between your roster, that's a really cool concept. If my group needs a tank, maybe I play one of the tankier characters, I don't have to log out. That's a cool idea, I really do appreciate that. Also, the next thing is the interface. The interface is streamlined, it's small, it's minimalistic, although it is kind of hard to find certain things. Like, leaving a party earlier was a little bit more complicated. Joining a party when I zoned into the Chapter 1 quest with Dr. Ock earlier, I didn't know I was joining a party. It didn't tell me it was group content or joining a party. So sometimes there's a little bit, not quite enough information. The, co the options menu, the options are really limited for the gameplay options. I think there should be highlighting options available. I should be able to hold, tap Alt and see it for a little while. I don't like to have to hold Alt or anything like that. I do like the fact that the keys are rebindable. The skill trees, they do a good job. They use 
So I'll just have Iron Man Trust go away. You. I'm an Avenger. So you can oh, see you think your father is that they difficult? have synergy bonuses between this and other skills. That's a concept from Diablo 2. Next thing I'm going to get into right now is innovation. Is this game innovative? No. <laughs> no, it's not. It, It's a hybrid of Diablo 2 and 3. It's... But, I'm going to get real quick. I don't think games have to be groundbreaking all the time. Games are iterative. That's why we have genres. You might be interested in trying this out, especially if you're a fan of the Marvel Universe. But this game is so similar to Diablo 2 and 3 that I just... It doesn't feel different enough. It's very similar. The only things it really adds are the, the T for the roster, and then the open world's kind of cool. Those are nice twists on the system, but again, it can be iterative, and it does add a little something. It just feels so similar. The progression system, all of that's very similar. So what do I think overall? I think if I were to call Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction a 10, if I were to call that the king of action RPGs, that's just how I'm going to compare it. I'm not going to compare it and say it's good for free-to-play, because that's not real fair. There's a lot of quality free-to-plays available nowadays. So if I'm going to call that a 10, I would probably set this somewhere around a 7. The gameplay is pretty good. The combat is a little bit slow. It's just the pacing. Maybe it just makes it feel not as crisp. Maybe faster casting, faster abilities just feel crisper and smoother. Or it's just that the characters are a little bit slower. Maybe there's some latency. But it, it does have a little bit more of a... Uh, clunky style feel. Maybe it's this character in particular. There isn't really any major innovation. And I don't think the genre is right. I don't think Action RPG was right. I think that is probably the number one reason. Overall, pretty good game. I could see people being interested in it for a few days, few weeks, maybe in a few months. If you're a fan of both Hack and Slash and Marvel, I could see you being a fan of it for a long period of time. Check it out. It's a free-to-play game. No barrier to entry. May as well go and see what it's all about. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.